Welcome to season two of Thinking Deeper About Growth and what a guest I have for you to kick off this season. He doesn't really need an introduction. He is, of course, the greatest, Mr. Usain Bolt. Welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. So we just, we played the singing bowl, which is a new experience for you. How did you feel? Anything? Yeah, it's nice. Good. A little bit zen out? Yeah. Okay, so we've done the kind of zen out bit. Um, I want you to imagine this is like your most favorite podcast interview (laughs) ever, but you're feeling the pressure. Can you bring your game face to the table? Tomorrow is ready. The freshness. Let's go. (laughs) Brilliant. All right. Will you take the first piece of paper for me so we can see what it says? Oh, they're all stuck. stuck. Sorry. Let's go. Champion. Okay. I mean, it's a word you're very used to. Everybody calls it you all the time. What does it take to be a champion? What's the composition? I was I was actually having a conversation to uh, with Alex Ferguson. Actually. Of course you were. Yeah. Don't want the name drop <laughs> yeah. like that, you know. No, I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Because I've always said it's just hard work and dedication. But he said something to me that kind of resonated with me, and he said, "Listen, the champions are the one that sacrifices the most." You know what I mean? I've always said that, like, but he says the most, and it's true. And we talked a length about it, like not seeing your family, you know what I mean? Not seeing your friends, not going out, you know what I mean? Just, it's all about this one thing, you know what I mean? It sacrifices so much friendship because you're so focused on making sure you get the work done. So for me, it's it's big on sacrifice because that's what I have had to do to be a champion. But not only did you become a champion, you retained that title. Is there more that you've got to bring to the mix? Yeah, getting there is easy. <laughs> It's it's always it's it's real when people say being number one is easy, staying number one is the hardest. It's it's real, you know what I mean? Because you're going there to get to the top, but when you get there, everybody wants that spot, you know what I mean? And now it's gonna take more work to actually stay there. But the good thing is that staying focused and understanding that this is a spot that everybody wants will keep you on your toes. Mm. You know what I mean? And what, what did you feel when you got to number one? And what whatever that feeling was, is that what you then used to fuel staying there? Yeah. Um, the, it was that first Olympics in Beijing. You could see it before I crossed the line what it meant to me, you know what I mean? And then defending the title every year after that was just, I enjoyed it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I enjoyed because... The key thing was to prove to the world that I was the best. That was my thing. You know what I mean? Because track and field was not the biggest sport, but to prove them that track and field is great. And I was one of the best sportsmen overall, not just in track and field. So for me, I had a goal and a focus. So yeah. And obviously there's there's a huge kind of pressure and weight because Jamaica is so proud of you for who you are, but you literally touch the heart of the whole world. So how does that feel then? Because it takes it to a whole new level. <laughs> I mean, that's always wonderful to meet people and to hear their stories. I think traveling around the world and seeing people and hearing them say, you inspire me to do well, not just athletes, but even doctors and medical students or just students in general see me and say, listen to me, you motivate me to want to be the best person I can be. And that feels really good. Yeah, yeah. that's bad. Let's go for another piece of paper. I'll take that if you want. Thanks. <laughs> superpower. <laughs> so this is an interesting one because the obvious question would be, what is your superpower? And the obvious answer would be, well, you're the fastest man in the world. And I checked with Siri, you're still definitely there. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> just in case I needed to get my information right. But I suppose my question will be, you. for me, I feel like you are a superhuman having a human experience yeah. and you're a human having a superhuman experience. Which one do you prefer? I'm a human having a superhuman experience. Definitely. I mean, because growing up, I never knew I would be this great. You know what I mean? It it's just was, track and field for me was just fun mm-hmm. at the start. You know what I mean? Um, I love cr- cricket. was my first love. So it was oh, just was it? cricket, cricket, cricket when I was growing up. And I kind of started track and field because I was good at it. So I did it. And then 
it became more and more full up over time. So for me, I never knew I was going to get here, you know, because my focus was to be a creator. Yeah. <laughs> so, but as a superhuman, yeah. you also have human experiences like injury, yeah. uh, false starts, <laughs> opponents giving you a lot of yeah. this. So how do you how do you manage to balance the two? For me, I think one of my biggest plus is that my mental strength is very strong. You know what I mean? I think that helps. If you're going to be on top and you're going to be in the, the limelight of, of everyone seeing you, mental space has to be very, very strong. And I think that's what really helped me to stay on top throughout my years because mentally I was strong and I knew what I want. So I just continued to push on no matter what. Did, have you got me- like techniques or methods that you could share that you've never told anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> For me, what helps is that I found the right people. You know what I mean? I had the right team, the right people around me that kept me focused. I think that was so important. Um, my coach, when I started out, I had not such a good coach. I found my coach and he is very smart. Glenn Mills, give it up to him. He's my favorite, man, yeah. right? even more than you. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's my favorite also. So, <laughs> like, mental wise, the conversation that we had, you know what I mean? Talking about injuries and just life in general, for me, taught me a lot. Mm. You know what I mean? So, he helped me. And having a great masseuse that understood everything, wanted to learn, wanted to get better with me. You know what I mean? So, the team that I had was just outstanding and it. Having a support group like that helped you to be mentally strong because you know you had somebody else to lean on. And for those that haven't seen, haven't watched Iron Bolt, yeah. I, I absolutely tell you to watch it because if you don't know what we're talking about with Mills, <laughs> I mean, he doesn't say much, but when yes. he does, he just drops a bomb. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> he needs to write a book, you know. Let him know if he needs an agent, I'm, I'm happy to take it on board. Told <laughs> I've told him many times, I'm like, you should write yeah. You know I mean, he's been, he's been coaching since he was 17. Wow. He's not good at running, but he's very good at coaching <laughs> running. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised at that last bit. <laughs> Go on, take another piece of paper. <laughs> Seven. Sole purpose. Okay, so sole purpose. Pele, the greatest man on earth, said that you were one of his idols. He said you were born to run. You've been through the drill. You've got the medals. You've got, you've broke the records. What do you think your sole purpose is? Why were you brought on earth? I must say, um, in, after the first Olympics, I remember it was 09, yeah. And I had a really bad car accident. And for me, when I came out of that car wreck with no issues whatsoever. You know what I mean? Um, that was when I said, you know what? I was pulling her to run. You know what I mean? This is my thing, you know what I mean? To bring joy to the people and to inspire the world. So for me, that was when I really kind of changed a little bit and buckled down a lot more. I think that really helped, helped me to open my eyes, you know what I mean? To say, listen, God gave you a talent, you know what I mean? To come out of a car wreck like this, with no issues, like, unheard of, you know what I mean? So that was when I really said, you know what, I need to buckle down and really get going, so. Almost like a, a rebirth, like a yeah, second life. exactly. I couldn't believe it. So wow. for me, from then on, I was like, more careful, I was much more focused. I sacrificed more, because I knew exactly, listen, God gave you a talent, use it in the right way, so that's what I did. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> competition. competition so if there's one thing that I know about you and that's whether that's you betting against the boys or you on the track or you competing against your coach or your masseuse to say you're going to be able to do this <laughs> or that exactly. what is it about competition that you love so I much know. I don't know really, I, I mean look at your face it <laughs> yeah, just lights up the minute I say competition yeah for me 
I don't know. I don't know what is. I think it's a general. You know what I mean? Of competing and being the best. Um, I live for it. Mm. That's one of my my greatest thing. When I knew I really loved competition was in 2013, where I think Asafa mm. was out, Tyson was out, um, Blake was out. It was yeah. just me and Justin. And for me, that was one of the, I wouldn't say boring, but I didn't enjoy it. Like I was training, 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 training. And when they kept on dropping off, yeah. and when I got to the championships, I was like, Almost like I didn't want to do it, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just live for great competition. I want to be the best. I want to be among the greats and compete. And does it so. matter who the competition is? Because sometimes I find like when the people like Gatlin, you kind of know what he's about, and you, you know, you know, he does a lot of the talking. But I feel like sometimes you need something with a bit more substance to actually like get you going. For me, I definitely don't care where the competition comes from. Mm. For me, I, I, I've said this before. I, I have to give it up to Gat. He kept me on my toes. <laughs> Since he came back, he kept me on my toes throughout. You know what I mean? And I have the respect for him because one thing my coach said to me when he started, he said, listen, there's one person who's going to show up in the moment is Justin mm -hmm. Gatlin. Mm -hmm. Remember that always. Yeah. I remember when, that, when, when, you, when my coach said that, I was like, all right, I have to take this guy seriously. Exactly, <laughs> Turn up. Because yeah. He's the type of person that studies and understands people. So when he said that, I was like, all right, coach, I'm yeah. focused. So he kept me on my toes throughout my career. Yeah. I have to give it up to him now. Respect. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, I hope it's a pleasure. So we talked a bit about this earlier on with the disciplinarians in your life. Me personally, growing up, my mum and dad were my <laughs> disciplinarians because I watched them work two jobs, work hard and, and kind of instill in me those values so that, you know, when I grew up, that's what I saw them do. You obviously bring the hard work, the determination, the resilience to the table already. What did those disciplinarians for you bring to the table that you needed, that you knew you didn't have? For me, as you said, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, I could see. My dad's still mad as well. I know, I, I know. Was... It's the same thing, you know. I mean? that. It's the same thing. They keep you on your toes always, yeah. no matter what, no matter how old you get. Yeah. For me, so one thing that my parents always have done throughout the years, and I've seen it, is like help people. They were always helping the community, even when they didn't have much. Mm -hmm. That's something that I, I grew up seeing. And one thing that I could not understand. It's like people would curse my parents out and then say five months after they would ask for help. They would yeah. still help them. You know what I mean? And now that I've grown up and I had tried to help as much people as possible, at times they would say, stop giving me all your money. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and like that's, what I, that's what I grew up seeing, <laughs> yeah. to help as much as I possibly yeah. can. So for me, that's something that I enjoy and I learned from my parents. But... They kept me on my toes. My dad was really disciplined here. My mom, I get away with a lot. Yeah, mom, same. Because I was, I was an only Good, child. Bad cook. Oh, right. Mom, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So she allowed me, but my dad was the one that <laughs> kept yeah. me on my toes. Yeah. Yeah. But you're right. It is because even when I've interviewed other, not just athletes, but entrepreneurs, the, the key theme always is it's your team. It's yeah. who you have around you that bring that to the table. So for you, it's NJ, it's yeah. obviously your parents from, yeah. from a young age to now, yeah. but, and, and Mills, of course. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's interesting that, you know, they, they have to do those roles. My team also, like my, as a masseuse, I just want to say the names. Yeah. Uh, Eddie was my masseuse from 08. I mean, he went through my whole career. Ricky Sims, yeah. he does, everything for yeah. me also you yeah. know what i mean even now that i've retired if i need a flight i still call him yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean so it's it's wonderful i don't know a great team they made sure everything runs smoothly my life runs smoothly so it's so important to find the right people to be around yeah. you know what i mean to keep your your life together and to keep your focus pick another good one they're all good actually fear 
so fear. Do we need to embrace fear in order for us to pursue our dreams or does it become an obstacle that stops us from pursuing our dreams? I think a lot of people it does. I mean, a lot of people, they're afraid what people are going to think about them or are they going to fail? You know what I mean? I've, I think I learned at an early age about this. You know what I mean? I wanted to, to be the best, but injuries, because before I understood that I had scoliosis, it was up and down hill with, um, with my back problem. And for me, I learned at the beginning that, listen, if you want this, you have to do it for yourself first. You know what I mean? And initially, I was stressed all the time and worried. I wasn't always this mentally strong person. I was always stressed until I kind of met Coach Mel that kind of guided me through certain things that at times you're just saying, you know what, forget this. I just want to give up, you know what I mean? And that's just the fear of disappointing everybody, the country. And failure, right? And your family, you know what I mean? So that's something that plays on your mind. But if you believe and want it as bad as I wanted it, just push on. You know? yeah. And accept the fact that fear actually lives outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, and it's exactly. okay for it to be there because you actually do need it. You do need it, yeah. definitely. Yeah. You do need it. But on occasion, it. when you've seen fear in the opponent's eyes, yeah. it's not worked. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, it's 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 different. Yeah. For everyone, but yeah. for me, it's good to have people to fear. It's, mm-hmm. it's wonderful, especially in track and field or sports. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. In general. But as you said, fear is good because fear actually drives you to, to want to do better. Who know? do you fear now? Nobody. Maybe my kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. otherwise <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Told you it wasn't like a normal podcast, didn't I? <laughs> Freedom. Freedom. So you were talking about sacrifice earlier on and the fact that you did sacrifice a lot, family, friendship. On occasion when you had to train, you had to eat the right thing, you had to stay in the zone. It's a heavy price to pay. Was it worth it? Definitely. <laughs> I think it was definitely worth it. You know what I mean? Um, I look at it both ways when you say freedom. You know what I mean? Because growing up, I didn't have much. You know what I mean? So coming out, like, that helped drive me to free myself and to make sure I could take care of my parents and make sure they could stop working and they didn't have to worry. So for me, that was the start. And then the end of my career, it was just, yes, I've done it. I can sit back. I can provide for my family. And that's How do you thing. feel now? Because I know, like, and I'll touch on the, the documentary again. There were times when you were like, I just want to go out and party. And <laughs> I don't want to train. And I don't want to have to eat this. And I don't want to have to do that. Um, how does it feel now that you can do that? <laughs> um, it, it's good to have a choice. Are you kind of anti-climax? Yeah. Now? Like, you've done it now. Sometimes, so. you know what I mean? Sometimes you're like, oh, let's do it. But then you're like, oh, let's stay, stay home this weekend. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the type of vibe, type of vibe. <laughs> but I think sometimes they said when you can get things, it's it's always you never want to do it. Is when you can't have it, then you want it. Absolutely. So yeah. I think that's maybe one of the things. You know, mm-hmm. now we can do whatever you want. That is peel it. No. As much as it yeah, was, you don't want it as bad. Exactly. We only have a few more left, you saying? So let's see what comes up yes. now. We've left it to the universe, you see, yeah. to control the, the flow of the conversation. Versus self-doubt. Yeah. So self-belief versus self-doubt. So I've seen you at your lowest points when you've had doubters, when you've had press saying things, and you've become the biggest believer for yourself, your biggest cheerleader. Yes. But then on the flip side, I've also seen when you've been at the racetrack, ready to go, and you've had the biggest doubts in your own ability? I think, oh my God. I think as I touched on it earlier. When I was younger, I was only doing it for, I was more focused on doing it for my country and my parents. And I never thought about myself yeah. once. You know what I mean? It was always just, I can't let them down. I can't let them down. So it was always that until I figure out, I had to do it for myself first. I mean, to develop myself, to focus on myself and then, in turn, it will come out as helping my parents. 
up in the country. And yeah, so, so these so were around. Exactly. So I learned that at that age. And for me, one time I doubted myself was 2011. Um, I was just going through a lot, you know what I mean? And when I got on that track, I didn't believe in what I have done. I would believed in my coach. I kind of just was going through a lot and I kind of lost focus. Yeah. And he knew as well, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he knew it all season. He, he just came like, up to you and he says, like, what's, what's going on? on? What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, I'm good. And he goes, no, no you're not. I know you're, you're not. different. Yeah. What's going on? You know what I mean? And as men, we tend to not talk about things as much. You know what I mean? It was actually half, after the championship, I kind of sat down and talked to him and he said, I knew something was going on. So mm. for me, that was the one time I really doubted myself and my skills and my coach and my team, you know what I mean? But after that. That's a big thing to say, isn't it? Considering what you've just told me yeah. about how they feel. You look you look like you're quite emotional. No, I'm just thinking, <laughs> I was thinking about it, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, that I really came true. Yeah. But what was your self-talk then at that point? How do you get yourself out of that mind? Because you did well. Coach told you, listen here, I know there's something up. Bring the A game back. And you did. Yeah. Well, so what? What I know the coach had said something, but what else did you have to do? What What gear did you switch at that point? For me, it's just a, I just reminded myself. You know what I mean? That listen, I you know what to do. You know what I mean? You know what it takes to be um, one of the best. So for me, that was something that helps. And as I said, my coach is really good at having conversations and explaining things to to me in ways that I can understand. And the belief that I had in him makes it even better. Mm -hmm. So it was good. And even 2015, I remember um, after the semifinals where I stumbled, he came to me. And for me, as again, if you watch I Am Bold, you'll see it. And he kind of called me over and he was like, champ, what's going on? Yeah, I remember that. Like, I was explaining to my coach, start right, he said, listen to me. We've been here before. Yeah. We've Don't make excuses. Before. Yeah. Stop worrying about it. This is yeah. what we do. When he, yeah. he, we had like a three minute conversation and it kind of changed my whole perspective and yeah. I was ready to go again. So yeah. for me, it's like, is that good? Yeah. 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 Please. Oh, it's water. Thought I'd made you cry then. <laughs> I've been known to do that. So. Spirituality. <laughs> So has there ever been, I mean, I can tell that you have a lot of faith, not just in yourself, but in God. You've mentioned that. Have you ever had, other than the time, obviously, post-accident, where you felt like you had a mystical experience of some sort, even during your training, maybe, or through your career, just before the game, just before you were about to race, any time? Have you, have you kind of had that spiritual experience? For me, it's... I think most of the times when I have similar things, it's always through other people. Like I would have conversations like my mom, like I would be at a championship. I was, I think it was, I want to say it's like 2012. And my mom just called me randomly. And I was like, are you okay? I'm like, oh, why? And he goes, I was praying for you. And God said I should just call you check on you, make sure you're okay. Wow. And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. And, he, and she said, you sure? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she said, listen to me. I know because that season I'd lost to Blake at the trials. Mm -hmm. And she said, don't worry, you'll be fine. Yeah. And we kind of had a, a conversation, you know what I mean? So for me, that have happened like three times throughout my career where people have just randomly seen me, even on the, I say, listen to me. I don't know why I need to say this to you, but I'm going to say it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So stuff like that happened to me. I love times. that. I love that. Is that the time where you literally, for those next three weeks, trained like an absolute trooper and made yourself <laughs> sick yeah, just yeah, to yeah. be better? Yeah. For me, after that, after I lost the break, it was, I was a different person. <laughs> <laughs> that was just competition. That one, that yeah. part was just competition. Yeah. Because I, I don't like losing. Yeah. Uh, no? So, Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> after I lost, I was like, no. Yeah. I I remember I remember even I was supposed to go to Monaco meet and I told I was looking at the coach, I was like, I don't wanna go. This is train. You know what I mean? And the guy just kept on up in the money, like, no, you should come. I was like, no. 
not coming is not about the money. It's about these medals, you know what I mean? Yeah. So for me, that was big. He kept on raising money. I was like, nope, medals. And for me, that was always one thing that I run for. It was always winning medals. It was never about, even the world records, it was all about winning as much medals as possible. And that you did? Yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> that's the last one. Uh, I think we may have her, yeah. Happiness. Define happiness. <sighs> For me, being around the right people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, even now, when I'm around my friends and my family, it's the happiest I'm going to be. I was about to say, and please don't say Hennessy or Carnival <laughs> or Party. No, no, They're not no. allowed. <laughs> no. no, for me, it's just being around my friends. You know what I mean? And my family and just talking. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's one of my greatest feelings in playing dominoes. <laughs> <laughs> I have to put that in. Yeah. I'm playing dominoes. I'm my, my happiest, I think. Yeah. But just having the right set of people around you. Because mm. we'll talk all day. And just laugh and just chat about the past and experience. When you're around the right people, you're just like the happiest for me. Mm. That's happiness for me in the right circle with the right people. And on reflection, being who you are now and the journey that you've gone through and all the lessons that you've learned, is there anything you would now tell your previous self, your younger version of you saying that you know had to change at some point? Is there anything you would have told him? For him to change what he was doing sooner, yeah. and what would that I, have been? Do you think? I, I, would, I don't know what I could tell my young self to let me change. As a young man, to get serious, that's a good question. What would I actually say, mm. my young self? It's just to to get serious sooner. Mm. To be determined because. I think if I did that, if I understood track and field and understood what it takes at a younger age, it's scary to say, but I would be way better than I am today. Big it's statement. scary to say. My coach, <laughs> my coach said it. My yeah. coach said, the world has not seen the best of you saying about. Wow. He yeah. said it to me and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but I understood what he meant because yeah. For me, I think I needed a balance with track and field. Like, you know, other people are different. I needed a balance. At times, I needed to blow off steam. I yeah. needed to go out. I needed to have fun. Like, some athletes, they can just train, 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 train. You maybe didn't need to fall <laughs> yeah. in a club somewhere yeah. and twist your ankle. <laughs> <laughs> that was not the plan. No. That was not the plan. But it's just one of those things that I've always needed to blow off steam for a while. Yeah. Because after I train, train and focus, after a while, it feels like I was losing my mind. Yeah, you know what I mean? I needed. And you spend a lot of time on your own as well. Yeah, so yeah. you have to be comfortable with yeah, your so own company we, and your thoughts. Yeah, exactly. So we had a understanding, me and my coach. Mm -hmm. Over time, he would give me two weeks here and there. And I would understand that when he says, this, it's time to work, it's time to work. So yeah. this is why he says, you have not seen the best of you same all. Because if I really was one of those athletes that could just stay on the path all the way to the end. It would have been different. And do you think knowing that from him now, it kind of fuels you to do more? Not obviously in track and field because you've retired, but do you think you could then start something new? And, and if so, what would that be? For me, like, how are you now going <laughs> to keep up the adrenaline? And I know you're doing soccer aid, but, you know. <laughs> For me, music now is yeah. slightly replacing track and field that's something that I think I could get into and I've also thought about because I love going out so that's one <laughs> thing I was like you really? know what? I might start a club <laughs> I might do a bar or something yeah. there's different things that is in the work I'm in no rush you know yeah. what I mean because my kids are young and you have now so I'm trying to be with them as much as possible right now mm. so. well listen <laughs> you did it you are unbeatable, undefeatable, unstoppable still for whatever is coming yeah, yeah. through for you. You've inspired the whole world, including myself. You Your whole anything is possible inspired me to go and pursue my dreams to become a TV presenter and look what's happened. Here I am. 
interviewing the amazing Usain Bolt. So I thank you. Deep gratitude. Um, thank you so much for your time today. Um, you have made a very ordinary person feel very extraordinary <laughs> to be in the presence of yourself. So thank you so much. And I wish you the best of luck with everything you do. Thank you, bro. Thank you.